Well, we talked yesterday about seeing the world through the eyes of Benjamin Netanyahu as the Prime Minister of Israel. Uh, I've been giving this a lot of thought the last day or so, and I've been thinking about the complexity of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's job attempting to lead a nation that the whole world really is against. And I felt like it would really be beneficial for all of us to just sort of walk through his thought processes so we could have an understanding not only of what he's facing, but where he's been and also what the Bible says is going to happen in the future. So that's what I want to do with you today. Uh, we're going to go down through a list of things that in my own mind, uh, I was just thinking that Prime Minister Netanyahu, in fact, uh, might be thinking about. Now, let me remind you that he leads a people that have just come out of 2,000 years of exile. Not 20 years, not 200 years. 2,000 years. The Jewish people were filtered through the nations of the world from 70 A.D. when the Romans came they uh, destroyed Jerusalem, and then they passed a law against Jews living there. What is there about Jerusalem that, well, Satan just doesn't want Jews there? Well, I know what it is. God said he would put his name there and that he would uh, put his presence there forever. And so Satan continually uh, tries to block all that. Anyway, the Jewish people, uh, they have been banished from Israel for 2,000 years from about 70 A.D. up until the nation of Israel was reborn in 1948. Now, in addition to thinking about the exile, the people that Benjamin Netanyahu is leading right now, they're only 70 years away from Hitler's crematoriums, from the concentration camps. Out of 17 million Jews on the earth, uh, six million of them died. Now, this is the nation he leads with all of the complexes, with all the phobias, the fears that go with your people. And let's face it, if you were Jewish, wouldn't you think everybody was out to get you? In the meantime, you've been taught from the day you were born that you're part of the chosen people. So how do you put that together? You're the chosen people. You're hated because you're the chosen people. Uh, all kinds of conflicting emotions. Some of them true. Some of them perhaps not true. But for 70 years now, just 70 years ago, the horrors of Hitler's Holocaust, Jews getting on boats through the middle of the night, ramming their boats up on the shores of the promised land, hoping to get there, and they made it. Some of them did not make it. They've watched brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers marched away to concentration camps. Some of them stood and watched their loved ones go. So here Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to lead uh, these people. And while the world stood by, his people were marched off to concentration camps. Now, the world actually watched and did nothing. I mean, even the United States, supposedly Israel's best friend, had quotas on how many Jews could come in. And when they reached that quota, they cut it off, in spite of the fact that the Jews were being marched off to gas chambers and exterminated. I'm ashamed of that. I'm appalled by that. I didn't do it, but our nation did it. So here this people is. They all know this. I mean, they know it like nobody else knows it. And Netanyahu is sitting there trying to lead these people. Now, I want to go ahead and walk you through all this because Israel's surrounded by 20 nations that want to destroy her. There's 22 
nations in the Arab League. Two of them have now made peace with Israel, Jordan and Egypt. The rest of them don't even recognize Israel's right to exist. So here they are in this little postage stamp sized country about the half the size of the state of Indiana. And yet the Arabs are saying, you've got too much land. You've got to give up your land. The Arabs have got, I mean, I'm talking about millions of acres. And yet they want to take what little bit they have. They want to reduce Israel to be nine miles wide at the waist. And so here you are in the sea of 20 Arab nations that want to destroy you. In Iran, it's common at rallies to hear a chance of death to Israel and Israel must be wiped off the map. Uh, Netanyahu truly believes that Iran is attempting to get a nuclear weapon right now, specifically so that it can destroy Israel. Uh, Israel's best friend, the United States of America, is now led by a president whose middle name is Hussein, which is one of the most popular Arab names. His father is Muslim. He attended a Muslim school. And I'm not saying that he himself is a Muslim. I'm just simply telling you, if you're Benjamin Netanyahu and you're looking at, you're trying to lead this people and safeguard them, his number one job, he believes, is to ensure the security of Israel. And he's looking at all this and this man whose name is Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, he's putting pressure on you to divide Jerusalem, to give half of it to the Palestinians. And you're trying to resist this pressure. And, that, and Obama is out negotiating with Iran. And when the details of the agreement that is almost reached comes in, in 10 years they have an open, open road to a nuclear weapon. And the whole world knows that. And you're sitting here uh, what are you doing trying to uh, keep track of all this? Okay, so uh, Obama is pushing Israel to accept the borders that Netanyahu knows are indefensible. On and on, all this is going. So I'm, I'm attempting to paint for you a picture of what's going on here. Now, in the meantime, the United States of America refuses to accept Israel's right to exist. And uh, I said that wrong. They, they do accept Israel's right to exist, but they refuse to accept Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Right now, we have our embassy. It's ridiculous. It's way back, way, an hour away in, in Tel Aviv, whereas all the governmental agencies are in Jerusalem. But yet we're playing this game that Jerusalem is not the capital. We recognize every capital of China, uh, of Saudi Arabia, where they won't let women drive, uh, where they cut people's heads off. Yet we accept their capital, but not Israel. I mean, it, it, the thing is so out of whack. It's stunning. And then every time Israel builds a home even in East Jerusalem, Immediately, President Obama and his administration criticize it. And this is just going on and on. Now, this is uh, an illustration of some of the talks that Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Obama have had. There's been a lot of tension. Now, they've tried to patch it up lately because there's a lot of pressure from America's side on, on Obama. We don't like the way you're treating one of our best friends in the whole world, you're continually agitating because of some of the things that you perceive uh, Netanyahu as doing. But this is just a little example of some of the pressures that are continually ongoing uh, between President uh, Obama and Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, I want to continue on here showing you some of the thought presses, processes that I think Netanyahu's going through, um, U.S. leaders are now saying that the U.N. may impose conditions of peace on Israel. So here's Netanyahu. What's he thinking? He's thinking, okay, if the U.N. votes 
the forming, forming of a peace agreement. What are my choices? Especially if the U.S. agrees. Now, the U.S. has the power to use their veto. But now Obama's threatening not to use the veto any longer. So what's my options? If they would vote, I'm going to have to say, uh, if I can't accept the conditions, I've got to say no. Well, if I say no, then all of a sudden, instead of sanctions on Iran, it's going to be sanctions on Israel. And you wouldn't think the U.S. would honor those sanctions. And as long as the U.S. doesn't honor the sanctions, we can get by. As long as we have the United States to trade with us, we can make it. But if Obama actually votes for the sanctions, what are we going to do? Then the worst case scenario, if the sanctions don't work, if we're able through Israeli innovation and all the rest, if we're able to continue to exist, what happens if there's then military invasion? Because that'll be part of the deal. Once sanctions are leveled, if you decide not to capitulate, they have the option of actually deciding to invade Israel. So here Netanyahu is. He's sitting, leading 6.2 million Jews and uh, 1.6 million Arabs, about 8 million people total. He's got 1.6 million Arabs, many of them that want to blow him up. What's he thinking? What's he going through? Uh, furthermore, while all this is happening, anti-Jewish demonstrations are escalating in Europe. Uh, Europe is planning to boycott Israel, Israeli products if Israel does not do what Europe thinks it should do. I mean, this is a real deal. They've already talked about it, that they're going to boycott the products from Israel. The BDS movement boycott divest and sanction movement is sweeping around the world. Uh, what this means is nobody buys anything from Israel. Nobody sells anything from Israel. If retirement funds, if uh, no matter what kind of a fund it is, if they have stock in any company in Israel, they are to divest themselves of it. Many of the colleges in the United States of America are selling all their Israeli stock and then sanctioning Israel. This movement is gaining momentum, not decreasing in momentum. So it's like the walls are closing in on every side on Israel. And that's what Benjamin Netanyahu has to face every day when he goes to his office.